Oh great Magic 8 Ball, will this video actually be successful? Damn. A word from this video sponsor. Got an idea for a circuit, widget, or device that you want to rapid prototype or sell? Check out JLC PCB. They offer their board manufacturing services starting at 2 bucks for 5 boards and only take a few days from start to finish. So make sure to check out JLC PCB. And once again, thanks for making this video possible. Now let's get on with the video. Hey there YouTube, this is SGM4306 back with another video. So in this video, I got another package from JLCPCB, this video sponsor. And this time, I know this is actually a little late. This would have been perfect for Halloween, but just the cards didn't play out right. Uh, so anyway, this is a Christmas present that I'm making. And actually, I just wanted to show you guys, um, within the box, there's this little Santa Claus delivering PCBs. That's just adorable. <laughs> Anyway, here's the board itself. I designed this in Eagle, and uh, basically, hopefully this all fits footprints, yeah. Okay, so yeah, uh, basically this is a small, a uh, small keychain-like device, and it is a digital Magic 8-Ball, if you guys couldn't tell from that intro, which would be pretty sad if you couldn't. But anyway, uh, so I obviously designed the board with a round motif. I put an 8 there. Not sure, actually. I'm pretty sure uh, Magic 8-Ball officially is trademarked. So this is a knockoff version. This is the uh, Super Ocho Ball or whatever you want to call it. Anyway, um, trademarking or copywriting aside, uh, basically, this is a very minimal design. And um, you don't have to solder a power switch or anything. can run straight off of a CR2032 uh, using you know, one of these little clip battery holders, and the chip goes to sleep when it's not in use. So this should last for, I think I did a calculation once. It's like a year or two, or maybe a couple of years, uh, using the power down state on the AT Mega. So anyway, all we really have is the chip, the AT Mega, a crystal, a pull-up resistor, and a capacitor, and that's kind of it. And also, obviously, the power switch. There's an ICSP header here, if you want to you know, program the chip in circuit, and that is brought out. Uh, so you can use a pogo or a solder header. There is a buzzer, which isn't strictly necessary um, for the design itself. And there's a switch and also a little jumper that you can cut if you wanted to use a switch, if you're really worried about battery life uh, in standby. But yeah, other than that, it uses one of these six pin um, uh, OLED screens, 0.9 inch. And this differs from the 7-pin version uh, because it lacks the uh, chip select pin. And so if you have a 7-pin uh, version, all you have to do is actually just tie uh, the chip select pin, uh, I believe, was it low? It's active low. Uh, and you can actually, you know, then use those displays as well on this. But I had one of these 6-pin um boards lying around so I designed this around that it'd be trivial to redesign this board and uh, change this to a seven pin header but yeah you can see it does fit in very nicely and that'll be roughly what it looks like so anyway yeah uh, let me grab all the parts and I guess we'll do a quick montage I don't think it'll be strictly necessary to grab the microscope seeing as there's only a few parts on here there's barely anything so uh, let's just throw one together real quick Okay, I made a little oopsie. Um, while designing this, 
I hadn't considered that the plastic of the battery container, even though I drew the outline, which is really silly that I didn't think, oh wait, it would cover up the, uh, the solder pads from the back. So you actually do have to solder it from the front. So yeah, in retrospect, I probably would have just removed um, this header. I had to trim the pins anyway, otherwise the screen was sticking up too far. So yeah, it's a bit of a pain to solder. So I'm probably gonna just nudge the battery uh, connect or the the battery bay a little bit up or down to give you clearance to solder that but anyway for a prototype this will be fine let's just see if it powers up and there we go it actually does power up I uh, pre-programmed the chip using a one of those uh, surface mount ZIF connector sockets so yeah other than a little bit of excess solder on the top. And there we go. Went to sleep. Turned back on. We can shake it. And it gives us our fortune. Ask again. The infamous ask again. There you go. Just got a bit of a... Zoom in on that. See how sharp the screen is? Obviously, there's a little bit of protective film. I'm going to leave that on uh, just for now until I give this to the gift recipient. Outlook not so good. Ooh. So, no, yeah, it all works. The, um, the only thing that really sticks out a lot, other than, you know, the screen itself, because it's kind of on standoff header is the battery you can get actually smaller like surface mount um, CR2032 battery holders so you could actually make this a lot smaller but I think that's good enough and I'm probably going to design like a little 3d printed case that will go around it kind of similar to like I did with my um, my hex binary decimal uh, calculator converter thing that I made but yeah uh, one other thing I do want to try is measure what the standby current on this is yeah, fully lit, it looks like about 13.25 milliamps. Wait till it shuts off. And it drops to 0.03, so that would be, what, 30 microamps that it draws. Obviously, I, I can't switch, I don't have enough hands, but... If I switched it down to the lower range, it would give you a more accurate calculation. But say it's 30 microamps. That's not a horrible uh, standby current. It's not great. I probably could have done a little more to get that down. Okay, hopefully you can see that. Uh, 220 milliamp hours is an average uh, CR2032 um, capacity. We we're drawing, as I said, about 30 um, microamps. So this is the number of hours it'll run, about 7,000 divided by 24 to get days, 305. So this will last actually a little less than a year in standby, uh, which isn't great, but it's actually not bad either. So yeah, and there are further optimizations you could do with the software too, um, to get the battery life a little bit better, but for a little trinket um, that you can easily pull the battery out of anyway, we'll just add a switch. If you guys are interested in how this works, how it randomizes, I'm, of course, using the um, the rand function. It's pseudo-random, obviously. It's not truly random. So what I'm doing is, depending on how long you press and hold this button. So yeah, when I'm pressing and holding this button, when it's running this animation, it's actually counting up real fast. And it stores that value after you release uh, in order to seed the rand function. So it it's more random, I guess, than just using... Uh, the standard random function and keep calling it over and over because every time a, a human can't hold the button for an exact accurate amount of time every single time. And um, one thing I did not show yet is actually I'm waiting on these little surface mount speakers to arrive in the mail so I don't have one to solder right now. But that would just beep, um, uh, you know, one kilohertz beep every time you press the button. It's just a cute little thing, um, but it's not actually necessary to even have that, so... As I see it, yes. I'm gonna go through a couple of these and show you some of the replies. Most likely. The 
without a doubt. Now there is a little timeout. So yeah, anyway, if you guys are interested in um, building your own, all the design files and everything are going to be online. Um, so feel free to modify this, obviously. I'm not selling this as a kit or otherwise because I, I'm using, you know, the Magic 8-Ball moniker. So I, I can't, obviously, uh, make these to sell. But, you know, it's easy enough I can change the name of that. That's just in the firmware. So yeah, anyway, uh, if you guys are interested, all the design files will be online uh, on the hackaday.io project page that I'm going to create for this. And it's actually a pretty simple thing. This To put one together from scratch only took me, let's see, not even, not even 15 minutes uh, because it was really only like four parts. <laughs> it was really just the chip, the screen, the battery, the button, and like some passives, and that's it. So there's really nothing to this design. It's actually quite simple, um, but it, I think it's actually pretty effective. I was going to opt for shaking uh, like you would a real Magic 8-Ball uh, by adding an accelerometer, but I thought that would just add more complexity that's unnecessary, so I just thought might as well just put a button on here anyway. And I guess I will see you guys in the next one. And um, oh, yeah, by the way, seeing as this is an odd holiday video, happy holidays to you all. And, um, and you know, have a, a great new year. Hopefully next year will be much better. Let's just see once again. Oh, Magic 8-Ball, will next year be better than this, you know, garbage dumpster fire of a year? You may rely on it. Oh, thank God.